The Cold Within is a narrative poem written in the 1960s by James Patrick Kinney, an American poet. It is a seemingly simple poem about six people around a dying fire, but it has a universally profound moral. Thus, it is a parable. It inspires us to rise above the petty barriers of class, caste, religion and race and promotes the concept of universal brotherhood. It teaches us that if we behave selfishly and do not share the resources we have, then in the end we are all going to suffer. It also makes us ponder upon the concept of sin and makes us realize that anger, envy, prejudice, miserliness and a materialistic attitude are in fact not merely vices but sins that will destroy us if we do not check them. The poem is set in the western part of Cincinnati, Ohio, a place where the blacks were hated during the 1960s. Now let us look at the summary of the poem. Six humans are trapped in the cold. They are sitting around a fire which is slowly dying out. Each one of them has a log of wood. But none of them is able to give up his or her log and revive the dying fire. This is because they all have some prejudice in their minds which they are unable to overcome. Ultimately, the fire dies out and they too freeze to death because of the cold, still clutching their logs tightly. Now let us read the poem and understand the meaning. Six humans trapped by happenstance in bleak and bitter cold. Each one possessed a stick of wood or so the story is told. The poem begins on a dramatic note. The poet straight away takes us into the midst of the action by telling us that six humans were trapped in a place which was gloomy and bitterly cold. Each one of them had a stick of wood that belonged to him or her. Here the poet uses the word humans, not people, not persons, not men, not women. By using the word humans, the poet wishes to convey that as a species, we are all equal in the eyes of the creator. Humans discriminate among each other, but the creator does not do so. These six humans were trapped by happenstance. Happenstance means an event that was not accidental. It was prearranged. It looked as if they were trapped by chance or accident, but it was not so. In fact, the creator or the universal power had so arranged it. They are dying fire in need of logs, but the first one, held hers back, for of the faces round the fire, she noticed one was black. Since they were trapped, they started a fire with whatever they could find, but soon the fire began to die out. At this point, it was necessary to add logs in order to fuel the fire and keep it alive. But the first human, a woman, held her log back. She refused to give it to the fire because she saw that there was a black man among them. She could not overcome the sin of racial prejudice. She could not bear to see the black man benefit because of her contribution. She would have given the log for the benefit of the others, but not for the benefit of the black man. The next man, looking across the way, saw one not of his church and could not bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. Now it was the turn of the next human, a man. He looked around at the people sitting around the fire and among them he saw that there was a person who did not belong to the same religion as him. Immediately he became intolerant. He could not overcome his narrow-mindedness and religious intolerance in order to contribute his log of birch wood to the fire. Birch means the wood of the birch tree. 
The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich? The third man sitting around the fire was wearing tattered clothes. Tattered means torn and worn out. He was obviously poor. He saw that one of the people sitting around the fire was a rich man. At once he tightened his coat. He pulled it closer. He thought, why should I contribute my log to the fire that will give warmth to this rich man who is lazy, who never has to work hard and only exploits the poor? He was filled with bitterness and envy and could not overcome these feelings. The rich man just sat back and thought of the wealth he had in store and how to keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. The rich man also did not give up his log of wood. He sat there thinking of all the wealth that he had accumulated. He felt that he had earned it through his consistent efforts. He did not want to waste it or fritter it away. He thought, how can I safeguard my wealth from this poor person who is lazy and aimless? who has no goals and no focus. So the rich man also could not give up his prejudice, his greed and stinginess. He had more than enough, but he could not bring himself to share even a little bit of it. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight. For all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the white. The fire was almost on the verge of dying out now. The black man saw this. But on his face it was clearly visible that in this situation the only thing he wanted was revenge for the mistreatment he had suffered at the hands of white people. His stick of wood had the potential to revive the fire and save everyone's lives. But he failed to see this potential. He was so blinded by hatred and the thirst for revenge that he only thought of using his stick to spite or hurt the white man. The last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. Now, it was the turn of the last man of this forlorn group. Isn't it strange that although there were six people in the group, they were forlorn, which means sad and lonely. The last man in this group never did anything without thinking whether it would bring him some profit or benefit. He had an extremely materialistic, transactional approach. He played the game of life by giving only to those who would give him something in return. He had no generosity or largeness of heart. He saw that the others were not giving up their logs. Therefore, he too refused to give up his log and save the dying fire. Their logs held tight in death's still hands was proof of human sin. They did not die from the cold without. They died from the cold within. Ultimately, the fire died out and all the six humans were frozen to death in the cold. Even though they lay still and dead, they kept holding on to their logs tightly. This was the proof of human sin. Their prejudices, bitterness, hatred, negative thoughts, were their vices or sins. They had a chance to give up their sins in the fire of enlightenment, but they did not do so. Their death was not caused by the cold without, which means the climatic conditions which were outside of them. Their death was caused by the cold within, that is the cold in their hearts, the lack of warmth, selfishness and the inability to reach out to others. By holding on to their sins, they not only died physically, but also spiritually.
the rhyme scheme a b c b and the fast paced narrative of the poem show us how quickly the vices demonstrated in the poem can ruin us the logs of wood are a metaphor for sin they represent the prejudices of each of the six humans if these logs are given up in the fire then the humans will be free from sin the fire represents the fire of enlightenment it is only by rising above our petty self interest and overcoming our prejudices that we will be truly enlightened the cold within is a metaphor for the lack of warmth in our hearts